Here's this week's Blending the Family Parenting Tip Tuesday from your host, Tommy Maloney. What's it this week? What's the little tip you're going to give us, Tommy? Welcome to another edition of Blending the Family, the podcast. I'm your host, Tommy Maloney. This is a special edition. This is going to be not only podcasting from the car, but we're going to talk about parenting tip Tuesday. Yeah. As of lately, I've been on this uh, Depeche Mode kick. Let me take you on a trip around the world and back. Uh, I don't know why. I don't, oh, I know why. I know why. There's a new movie coming out called Ready Player One, and one of my friends, Scott, um, uh, had me listen to the audiobook. Oh my gosh, we got a lot of snow. Oh, this is going to be a fun drive, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my gosh, we got dumped on yesterday. An overnight. Okay, bear with me. Anyway, uh, as I was saying, my friend Scott uh, recommended Ready Player One March 30th, I think that movie comes out. And hey, there's a neighbor out. It's minus one degree. Minus one degree. I know a lot of people when they listen to this podcast, you know, they go, Tommy, you're nuts. Because you start talking about one thing and then you just squirrel. Yeah. Anyway, Ready Player One, there's a lot of 80s type music. And if you have seen the trailers for Ready Player One, there's Depeche Mode, there's Van Halen, there's uh, AHA's Take On Me, and as I said, I've been looking, uh, or listening to a lot of Depeche Mode lately, so that's that's where we're at for that. Um, bear with me as I turn, whoa, a little sliding action there, a little sliding back tail, what do you call, fishtail, a little fishtail there. All right. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out which way I should go to work because I normally take this back road, uh, and not sure if if that's going to be plowed. <sighs> eh, you only live once, right, kids? Only live once. On the Parent Tip Tuesday, here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about uh, a topic that just... Whoa, sorry, hold on. Whoa, sliding, sliding, sliding. Oh, my gosh. Whoa. Hmm. Um, okay, after having a little brief little heart attack there, that you got to listen to. <laughs> can't even tell if there's a lane anywhere. All right. Um, And the snow has something to do with it, but also um, my wife Ann and I uh, went in to uh, sign off on our taxes. And this Parenting Tip Tuesday deals with finances. And this has been uh, another, unfortunately, because I'm the cause of it, uh, another rough year financially. And because of me being the problem child, I can't tell if I'm in a lane. Bear with me, bear with me. I'm pretty sure I'm in the correct lane. Let me get over. Just gonna get over somehow, some way. I don't know. Um, I mean, it, it doesn't have to be just because you have kids that you should have financial health. You should have financial health. Period. End of story. And I know I've preached this before. Not associate with them, but it's just a recommendation to find a program or find a 
what's the word I'm looking for? Find a, um, I guess, habit, maybe a good habit when it comes to your finances. But we, uh, in a roundabout way, we used uh, Dave Ramsey's program because each uh, month we can set up our budget and see, you know, if we're in the black or if we're in the red. And a lot of times uh, we are in the red. And that's not a good thing. So, as let me talk to you parents. So, as parents, if you don't have uh, your finances in a with a or a healthy relationship with your finances, well, what does that say to your your children? If you can't. You know, for example, for example, on uh, this past weekend, Connor wanted, my son Connor, wow, and he needs one, but we're towards the end of the season for hockey, but he wanted a new uh, goalie stick, new hockey stick. And I didn't have the, I mean, I had to tell him I, I didn't have the money. I did not have the money to cover it because I am uh, in the process of paying off the rest of his hockey fees for this season. And so it it really hurt that I didn't have the, the money to be able to buy him the hockey stick. And this summer he's good I mean kids grow drives me nuts kids grow and of course you have to buy him clothes and if your son or daughter plays sports you might have to buy them you know like baseball season's coming up so you might have to get them a new mitt new um, cleats good coffee this morning all right um so they grow and you have to buy them stuff and if you don't have the funds what does that say to your kids what does that say that you know and i get it i I mean believe me i'm living it every day of not having you know i have luckily this morning i have enough uh, gas to get me to work and then I'll put in you know a few shillings into the gas tank later to to make it back home but I get it parents I fully get it but what are you doing about it what are your financial goals are you sharing these financial goals with your kids do they have financial goals We have uh, Miss Rebecca, who is 16, and we'll be getting her driver's license here very shortly. And of course, there's a few things that factor in when when our kids turn 16. One is a car. Well, have they been saving up money to help finance that car? Listen, even if you have the money to buy your child a car, don't do that. Don't do that. In my opinion, you're not teaching them anything other than being handed stuff. And, you know, they should, I mean, especially a major purchase as a car. No matter, you know, my first car, this is how, let's tell you how old I am, my very first car was a AMC Gremlin. Yeah. Blue. Had the Levi covered seats on it. Remember those? I paid $400 and it was my Aunt Nancy. I bought it from her. She didn't give it to me. Okay? That's number one. She didn't give it to me. I had to pay for it out of my own monies, my own funds. Uh, dead presidents, whatever else, whatever else the kids would say. Um, 
kids should have skin in the game when it comes to major purchases such as that, okay? The other thing is, uh, with Rebecca uh, getting a car, purchasing a car, comes the insurance, okay? Uh, we talked to our insurance agent, uh, Ken, and he gave us numbers, and obviously, with a 16 uh, year old driver, and found out statistically, uh, I didn't know this. I thought it'd be the other way around. But statistically, uh, six young girls, insurance wise, uh, higher cost versus 16 year old boys. Uh, 16 year old boy or boys, for some reason, that doesn't increase until they're, I think, I think I heard Ken say 17. I could be wrong. But anyway, bottom line here is that is going to put, obviously, in our household, our, our monthly budget, once Rebecca gets a car, that's going to put a little bit of financial burden back on my wife, Ann, and I. So this is why it's so important to, to plan ahead, have a healthy financial plan, not not just each month, but each week, okay? Ann and I have a weekly meeting, and we've, we've missed uh, a week or two here, but we're constantly, though, even though, excuse me, even though we're not having a specific meeting at times, we are talking about where we are financially. Oh crap, that's fog. This is going to be a foggy drive as well. Uh, I should have just called it sick. Anyway, sorry, I digress. So again, the big picture, and I, as I said earlier, this this might not pertain to just parents. This is going to pertain to you as well. If you're single, married, uh, why do we have flashers on ahead of me? What what's going on here? What in the wide wide world of sports is going on here? I don't know. A couple of cars. Had their flasher time there, pulled over to the side, so I don't, I don't know if there's a little bit of a fender bender. Anyway, back to the point. So it doesn't matter if you have kids or don't have kids, married, single. You, your finances aren't um, in line with your daily habits. Then you're going to find yourself in trouble. And I mean. This is one of those things where you really need to focus on. Um, you know, just because, let's say you make, I don't know, let's say $1,000 a week. You know, if you just think that, eh, I'm not keeping track of my spending or keeping track of what bills I have to pay, you're going to find yourself in the big picture of not having a healthy financial life. That's that's the bottom line right there. Now let's let's break it on down. Break it on down. Let me take you on a trip. A little musical interlude there. But let's let's focus on the kids, all right? So one of the the tips that we we try to implement, but I it just didn't work out in our household. Maybe it'll work out in your household. And that is, uh, and it was really funny. Recently, I was cleaning out the home office, and I I found a bunch of stuff, including one of the three ring binders. Uh, we were using for uh, Rebecca and Connor. And we had uh, each of them had a, this white three ring binder with their names on them. And then in the binder, 
had those like Ziploc clear uh, pouches. And there was four pouches in there. I'm trying to remember them as I'm trying to focus on driving, focus on the weather, focus on the truck in front of me, pickup truck. And one was tithing, one was short-term goals, one was long-term goals. Oh, and fun money. There we go. So tithing, short-term goals, long-term goals, and fun money. Whenever they would receive, let's say, um, I don't know, uh, a, a check for their birthday or maybe a check for Christmas, um, we would take the check and tithing was 10%. So whatever 10% of that check went right to tithing. And But, but the kids got to choose who they were tithing to. And I believe like Rebecca would just tithe it back to the church. Uh, Connor would tie the two, um, uh, either a local or, or National Cancer Society. And then you had, all right, a short-term goal. And maybe the short-term goal was um, maybe one of the kids wanted to buy, you know, a, a new a new shirt, a new piece of clothing. Long-term goal could be for for both of them a car and then fun money would be hey you have this fun money to go to the movies with your friends so that's what uh, that was okay you could do the same thing for your kids or even yourself of you know having uh, your own binder you know again tithing and I hope you're not rolling your eyes at me about the whole tithing thing but and then set up you know your own short term goals long term goals and fun money you know fun money could be if you're if you're a couple you know fun money could be that date night and you know that's where it's it's vital to be financially responsible how fun it is to be able to do those date nights and they don't have to be um, an elaborate event they can just be as simple as oh, there was one time Ann and I uh, went to one of those big furniture stores and we just walked around there and then afterward we just went and got a cup of coffee and just sat there and, and talked so again, date night doesn't always have to be some big, elaborate event. It could be so many different things, okay? Now, back to the kids. I mean, this this is where you teaching them how to have a healthy relationship with money and by using, for example, this binder and showing them, you know, what each uh, pocket represents and why it's important to have a healthy relationship with money okay and that's where also if you're if you are a couple and you haven't had that discussion about money about well what does money mean to you versus what does money mean to your uh, significant other it could be two totally different uh, thought processes. So have those tough conversations. You know, as far as divorce goes, that's usually the number one cause of divorce is finances. So be aware of that. A little foggy out. Man, it's cold out. I'm saying it's cold out because I can feel it in the car that the heat isn't really heating up. There we go. Out of the fog. All right. So, Parenting Tip Tuesday to you, or even, as I said, you don't have to have kids, but it's to have that healthy relationship with money and to 
build a financial future, you know, with yourself, with your significant other, with your kids. It's, again, it's important to understand, you know, money coming in, okay, where's that money going? Where's that money, you know, is it strictly going to bills? What bills do you have? And as I said, we use uh, Dave Ramsey, but I know there's platforms like Mint. Uh, my wife and I used uh, Mint for a while. Um, there's other um, apps you can use, but it is having those difficult conversations. And I'm going to tell you <laughs> firsthand. I don't like talking about money. Uh, you know, here, here's uh, when we went to go sign off on our taxes, and uh, the tax gentleman Bill is going through the breakdown with me, and I'm just, I'm just not a numbers person, okay? Um, due to uh, again some issues this this past year, I owe. I owe, I owe, it's off to work I go. Yeah, I owe both state and uh, federal. You don't want to be like that. Trust me, you don't want to be like that. Almost sound like Bill Clinton. I did not have relations with that woman. Um, but that's, you know, because I owe, you know that's that's my fault, and a lot of it has to do with being out of work while uh, still needing to pay uh, other areas. <coughs> excuse me, of my life, and because I got behind on certain aspects of my life I have to come this April pay and I mean they're not huge amounts but still that's that's money that could be used for other things and that's how you should look at it too is that um, you know watch kids especially teenagers where you know the phrase "I want things and I need things." Okay, it's great. It's great to want things, but do you truly need it? You know my my stupid running joke is, I need glasses. I haven't had glasses in probably four years. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me grab more coffee. And I, I have to, because, because of things that have happened in the past with the former spouse, my major responsibility is hockey. And if, if you're not aware, hockey at the youth level is expensive very expensive and I mean the big picture is also yes it's expensive and there's other costs to it uh, you know in, in my situation it's needing you know not well there's actually one other parent who lives farther than I do from the rink. I couldn't believe that. But so there's, I mean, there's little factors like gas costs of going to and from games and practices and making sure Connor's there. You know, that's that's part of this cost besides uh, equipment and um, other little things like the required warm-ups that they have to have is the warm-ups the t-shirts the shorts the hood I mean it's a, uh, yeah, yeah. 
I can I can just go on a whole tangent about our hockey association, but we won't because our focus is on financial health. And and, and this I mean this brings up you know so for hockey. I had to, for this year, I had to uh, beg, borrow, and plead to to find, to get funds in order for Connor to play. And I had to borrow money f- from my mom. I needed money to help pay um, in order for Connor to play hockey. And, you know, this is, this is, what parenting is all about. I mean, we don't like saying no to our kids. We don't like saying, no, I can't afford that right now, or uh, no, we can't do that right now. So it's it's one of the hardest things, uh, not not just a parent, but even you can carry that over to, to business as well. You know, as business leaders, no is part of your vocabulary uh, and it's it's not always easy a two letter word is not always easy to say to people and in my opinion it's even harder trying to say it to kids Let's see if my feet can get warmed up here a little ooh car in the ditch not good not good um so no is hard. No is, is difficult to say uh, to, uh, to almost anybody. And as I said, I, I didn't have the fun. Somebody's going to pass me? Are you nuts? Uh, they go pick up truck, pass me on a winter's day. All right. But... Let's, so yesterday, uh, Ann and I were talking about, all right, let's start talking about, um, you know, what are we going to do or what am I going to do in order to make sure I'm not struggling come August into September for the next hockey season. And so part of our next budget meeting, we're going to start talking about, all right, how much can I budget each month and I'm going to and it was a really good idea was to take uh, so whatever I budget that money's going to automatically come out of my account and then go to uh, we have a, a another bank a credit union bank and dang running late this morning because of the weather. I know, I know, should have left earlier, but coulda, shoulda, woulda. But take whatever money that I'm going to allocate and have that automatically come out of my my account, and then that money will be transferred over to the credit union and start building up that money for the following hockey season. So I have none of the money for uh, specifically for hockey, but for you know other parts of hockey. So, for example, there are team fees, and then there's um, league fees, and so I have uh, enough money to cover both of those. I mean. Just another, for example, we have tryout fees. It's insane. Youth sports today is just insane. What happened, I don't know, when I was a kid, you know, you played youth baseball. And I think we had practice once a week and we had a game on a Saturday. That's it. There you go. Or even when I played soccer in high school, I think it was 40 bucks. 
youth sports has just gotten so out of hand. Just my own little soapbox right there. But it goes back to the original point for this Parenting Tip Tuesday is making sure you are financially sound, making sure that you do have those uh, emergency funds to cover uh, life. Um, you know, it's not just, you know, to cover your, your kids' sports, it's to cover, you know, medical or, or car or clothing, you know. So there's so many, um, in my in my view, so many things that we adults need to be better at, and that's the financial piece. God. Uh, <laughs> I have to merge here, and the weather sucks, cars are in the lane. Let's start moving. So I got cars behind me that are not happy with me. Oh, it's a truck. That's good. That's good. All right. I'm gonna let, hopefully, this person's gonna let me over. Okay. I think I'm in a lane. Ay, ay, ay. Kids, don't do this at home. Don't drive and podcast. In the wintertime, with snow. I look, I mean, there's a couple of cars in front of me. Hopefully, they're in the lane as well. I'm telling you, I should have just called in sick today. <laughs> Wowza. Wowza. I thought I saw a plow up front. Guess not. All right. So, we talked financial. We talked about, you know, uh, recommendations to definitely use oops, now I'm off the side of the road um, definitely find um, apps that you can use on a consistent basis to keep you know your finances in check we also talked about you know, what we've done in the past of using a three ring binder and that's where we had tithing as one of the little pockets short term goals was another one, long term goals and fun money and I, I firmly believe that if, if you can be a really good mentor to your kids with money you're teaching them a life skill that they're going to just use and be able to share, you know, when they become parents. And then here's something else I was thinking about. As I said earlier, it, we got a lot of snow um, here where I live. And what happened to, I, I don't know if you did this as a kid, but I did this as a kid, where when you get snow, you would go house to house and say, hey, I'll shovel your driveway for, well, back then it was probably a buck. And where are those kids? Whatever happened to them? You know, even even uh, this Monday, because um, it was a holiday on Monday, even on Monday, it snowed. And I'm thinking, Connor, go house to house. Go tell them, I don't know, five bucks. You know, don't overprice it. Just five bucks. I'll shovel your walk. I'll shovel your driveway. I mean, you probably live in the same type of neighborhood where, you know, within 24 hours you have to have your sidewalk shoveled and all that shovel, your driveway shovel, or you get in trouble with your, um, what do you call them? You know what I'm trying to say. The uh, association, your local association, you know, the housing association. Um, so what happened to those kids? Okay, there's, I can't tell if I'm in a lane or not. 
I wasn't. <laughs> um, parents, have your kids learn responsibility like that. Teach them, you know, how to have that entrepreneur spirit at a young age. Okay? Kids need to take advantage of those situations, you know, especially when, if they go, eh, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go to work, but if I don't go to work, here are the consequences. Do you like food? All right. So, that's that's my little rant on, on that. And I'm responsible for that. I, I should have forced, but I don't want to force. I want... I, I, I would like the kids to be able to think on their own. I would like our kids, our you know youngsters, to take the initiative, take that responsibility of, hey, it snowed, I'm going to bundle up, I'm going to go house to house and go see how much money I can make. Brilliant. Brilliant. You know, I'm sure you and I are, are very much alike in in the aspects. I mean, even if you don't have kids, but you want to set good examples. You like to, you know, lead by example. So you're at the workplace and you're doing those extra things because you want to lead by example. You know, I, I when I got up uh, yesterday morning, no, I got up, I shoveled. I want to lead by example. I want you know the kids to see that taking that initiative, taking that again, that responsibility of making sure that our driveway is shoveled or or you know, and then in the summertime it's mowing the yard. And right now, uh, that's actually Connor's responsibility after all these years. Finally, finally. The only thing I have to do is clean up doggy duty. That's it. And that's fine. I don't know about you, but I, I don't mind cleaning up dog poop. And here's why. I put on uh, a really good podcast. Not this one. Haha, <laughs> joke. Um, but I put on the headphones, listen to a podcast, and just clean up doggy duty. That's what I do. It's my zen. Oh, all right, truck, pickup truck, go, go get in front of me. Come on, come on, there you go. Ay, ay, ay. If I didn't have a meeting at 8 o'clock in the morning, I would have called in sick. That reminds me, my work phone's in the car. Anyway. Um, so financial responsibility. And as I stated, this is not just a, a parenting tip. This could be an adult tip. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to have kids to have, uh, to think about your finances. And would love to hear back from you on not only what do you do, but what are you showing your kids and what is working why is I off the road again oh my gosh apologize for the commentary today but I think you're enjoying it I think I don't know alright I don't know if I can I don't know if it's safe enough I don't know if it's safe enough for me to reach over i try it we're going to stop this podcast yes because I think I've said my piece. I think I've spoken enough for you to understand on this Parenting Tip Tuesday, financial responsibility starts from the top and then work your way down to your kids. Uh, there's a plow. He's chilling. He's chilling. He's just relaxing. Side of the road. And there you go. All right. Uh, once again... Thank you for sharing. Thank you for caring. Uh, I am so grateful for any time you uh, listen to this podcast and download and, uh, and and keep the emails coming and and 
let others know about Blending the Family, the podcast. You have a great Tuesday. I'm going to attempt to do the bad thing and shut this player off. Thank you for listening to Blending the Family. Oh, yeah, and we hope you'll come back next time. Please. No, really, please.